General Lady, my good friend and colleague from Oklahoma. It's recognized for three minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you uh, to the gentleman from uh, Pennsylvania for yielding. I rise today in opposition to the combined rule and to the underlying measures, including H.R. 51, the Washington, D.C. Admission Act. Once again, our friends from across the aisle are making an attempt to gain more control in Congress, this time in the Senate, by trying to hide behind the guise that residents of the District of Columbia do not have the means for adequate, adequate representation in Congress. While Americans deserve full voting representation from their national government, our forefathers never intended for the federal seat of government to serve as a state. The founders intended the Capitol to be a neutral ground for equal sovereign states to work together to conduct the nation's business. This bill does not at all follow what our forefathers envisioned. H.R. 1 overlooks the U.S. Constitution, which, in which Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, designated Washington as a federal district, not a state. That alone should make this legislation unconstitutional. Because the District of Columbia's status is spelled out, it would take a constitutional amendment to grant permission for this democratic power play. There have been several alternative proposals and amendments. The gentleman is correct. The House will be in order. The gentlelady may proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. There have been several alternative proposals and amendments put forward by Republicans, none of which have been heard. My colleague, Representative Dusty Johnson from South Dakota, has proposed the District of Columbia Maryland Reunion Act, which I have co-sponsored, that would revert the majority of DC residential areas back to the state of Maryland. The National Mall and other federal buildings would remain as the District of Columbia. Before we create a new state, we should return DC's residential areas back to the original state they were served. With HR 51, Democrats have yet again failed to examine the consequences of their rushed actions to gain more control in Congress. The District of Columbia has received billions of dollars from the federal government to fund its entire judicial branch of government, among other things, which would end under statehood. But Democrats weren't thinking about the nuts and bolts of how to make DC a state before proposing HR 51. The only thought in their mind was two more Senate seats, more control of the government, more control of American taxpayer dollars, more out of control spending, more federal overreach into the lives of everyday Americans. We've been down this path many times in Congress, voting yet again on a bill that has had no input from Republicans, nor has had much chance of receiving any Republican support on the floor. President Biden was elected on the premise of working together with Republicans, extending a hand across the aisle to do what is best for the American people. I have struggled to find many examples of what that bipartisanship I share with my constituents in Oklahoma. But what I do have are plenty of examples of democratic power plays, an unwillingness to let the voices of Republicans be heard, and H.R. 51 stands as a prime example of both. I encourage my colleagues to oppose the combined rule and to oppose H.R. 51. Madam Speaker, Speaker I yield. Fired. The gentleman from Pennsylvania reserves. The gentleman from Maryland is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the gentlelady invites us to uh, return the District of Columbia to Maryland, which, of course, debunks the argument that Congress cannot modify the boundaries of the District of Columbia. But in any event, that's not what the people of Washington, D.C. have asked for. They've used their rights as American citizens under the Ninth Amendment to the Constitution to organize a new state and to petition Congress for admission to the Union. Neither has the, uh, the Maryland General Assembly asked for a return of the lands to Maryland. So that certainly answers a set of political conditions that don't exist in the real world. With that, I'm going to yield three minutes to my friend, the gentlelady from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee.